Welcome. Today, I will attempt to show you how to make a real-time video chat app without any server logic at all, only using WebRTC. And the information can be transferred between different people using emails. So basically, I'll show you in a second what the demo is, but when someone makes a WebRTC call, first, they capture the media device they want, either a webcam or the current screen or anything, microphone, etc. And then when they want to start the video chat, one of the people makes what's called an offer. Like as if someone's dialing a phone number, they make an offer. And then when they make an offer, then it generates some text, which we don't really need to know what the text means. All we need to know is the person who made the offer takes the text and sends it to the other person. And this can be sent in any way. Usually people use web sockets, but this can be done through email, text, anything. So imagine these tabs are two separate people. So, and in this particular sample app found at osmos.com slash i2i with the number i, number two, letter i. So for example, someone takes the offer here. This is the one making the offer. And then this is the other person. And then this other person takes the offer and accepts the call, accepts the offer. And then once they accept the offer, then they need to generate an answer based on that offer, which is done behind the scenes. So make an answer. And then that generates other text, which is similar to the text from before. And we don't really need to know what it means. All we need to know is that this is an answer to the call that's made. And then the first, the second person takes the answer and sends it back to the one who made the call. And the other person who made the call accepts the answer. And then, as you notice, it still doesn't do anything, which is good, because it's not supposed to. And as you've noticed, these ICE candidates, which means something a little bit complicated, are, have been generated. We don't, really need to, we don't really need to know what this text means. All we need to know is that whenever either side gets some of this text, then they need to send it to the other person. So, for example, if I get this text here from this person, and I send it to this other side using text, email, etc., then this other person adds it to their connection, then it should start the real-time communication, as you can see. This could work as if it's different computers as well. So this is taking up a little bit of bandwidth because I have about four different streams going at the same time. Okay, so now let's try to discuss how to make this from scratch. So take your favorite code editor and you can start with making a JavaScript file somewhere. And because it's good to separate the JavaScript from the HTML as best as possible. Find somewhere to save it. Great. So this will be our code with the Shem's help to make the JavaScript for the programming stuff. Yeah. And let's also make an HTML file while we're at it. And then HTML. It could be anything. Doesn't really matter. And now let's include that file for reference. Okay. Now we should be ready to start. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to simplify the WebRTC process by making a wrapper object. So, for to do that, let's start making our our objects. Let's see, wrapper. And we won't actually, the end user, meaning us, who uses this JavaScript file, won't actually need to use the WebRTC protocol at all. We'll just call this wrapper, and then that will do all of the hardware work. So generally, the first thing to do when we're making a WebRTC app is to generate this object called an RTC peer connection. So let's do that as a local variable in this function. Equals new RTC peer connection. You can see it auto fills it here. And then there is a parameter here, which is useful for multiple networks. But for, for simplicity's sake, we can skip it. Essentially, is an object which has a, a different keys and pr properties which represent different servers to use for talking to each other 
if the two computers are on different networks. Basically, I didn't know this, but apparently WebRTC tries to talk directly from one computer to another by finding the public IP address of the other computer, similar to making a phone call to someone. So I didn't even know that. So that's what it tries to do, but if it can't do that, then it uses the servers mentioned here, which are publicly available. But for simplicity's sake, we can leave this empty since we're testing it on localhost. Now, for example, this needs a start function. So it's dot start equals, and then this start function will set up the event listeners that we will need. So essentially the only event listener that we really need is we need to de determine these ice candidates that we saw in Chrome. So here's, here's the other code, by the way. Just, if you could just memorize it, then that should be good. So we, we might as well actually just copy this now. So ice servers is one of the properties that we need if for multiple connections. So if, since we're here, we might as well just add it. This is useful for multiple connections. And so the ice servers are basically default servers that it, the browser uses behind the scenes to connect one computer to another if they're not able to correct them directly. So ice servers is the key, and then the value is an array. No, actually, the value is an, another object, and that object has URLs. They change the protocol a little bit. And then that URL is an array, and you can put multiple pub URLs. To find them, you can just search public ice servers, or you can make your own, or stun servers, they're called. Which is basically, as mentioned, if the computers aren't able to correct, talk to each other directly, then they use that as a default. Okay, so, so we need to add an event for when those ice candidates are sent to each other, as you saw in the demo, which those ice candidates contain text that's necessary for us to draw. So let's add that to our RTC connection. So add event listener ice candidate. This happens whenever the information is sent to the, our RTC peer connection, which is needed, to, which is needed to send to the other person. So, so we need. So let's make some callbacks here. So, for example, this will be called by our client. So this dot on ice, for example, this could be overridden by our client program. So whenever, just to simplify things. So whenever we get a new ice candidate, which is the information needed to send to the other person. Then we will call this callback, which can be used by the other user. So, for example, just dot on ice, and then e. Simple enough. There's also there's also some other event listeners, but we don't need it for now. So, next, we need to create the function to make the offer. So, this dot make offer is a new function, and this this is actually we don't need anything here. Because the make create offer is built into RTC protocol, so this is the, so so this is happens after the stream is already gotten, meaning after someone is already connected on their webcam, then they can click make offer. And to do that, we need to call the make offer method RTC dot or create offer, I believe, create offer, and then that should generate a promise. So we need to wait for that, and then once we have the offer. Then we can make another callback and call that dot on offer, and then this could be overridden later. Then we just call that callback. But before we do that, we also need to set use this offer to set it as the what's called the local description of the RTC connection, which this describes basically the information on on the side of the one making the call. So when they make the offer, they have to set that to what's called the local description. So do RTC dot set local description like that and then to the offer and actually we should do our callback after that is finished because after it's finished then we can send it to the other person or actually it might not make a difference i have still actually not determined because it, it might not make a difference which order you do it but either way we need after we create the offer we set that offer as our local description and then we do our callback, which we can override later to send that to the other person through WebSockets or email or copy paste, etc. So 
Now, this is so imagine this we're making this on the side of the person who's doing the call, but we're going to make everything in one object. So, for example, what does the, what the person making the call need to do? He needs to make the offer and then he needs to accept the answer that's given to him. So, so let's make another function called accept answer. Simple enough. And this contains some text that has a certain format, whatever. So, so when we have our own offer, we set that as the local description. But when we get the answer from someone else, we need to set that as the remote description. So RTC dot set remote description text. And then we could make a callback. We don't really need to because once we accept the answer, it should be good to go. But just for us to know when it happens, then we could make our own callback. So for example, this dot on accepted answer and you can make callbacks any way you want this is just for simplicity's sake so this dot and then we don't really we, we could even say where it is but we don't even need to say where it is because the main thing is that we set it as the remote description here okay so this is all the code that's needed for the person who's making the call they need to make the offer and accept the answer except for the add ice candidate which we'll get to that in a second but so, or we can even do that on the client side once we have this actually. So now imagine we're writing the code for the person who's accepting the offer and writing the answer. So it's very, so, I mean, accepting the, yeah, accepting the offer and writing the answer. So let's make another function for that. So person accepting offer. So let's set that as a new method it's called this dot accept offer. And it's similar to the accept answer, except slightly different because we also have to Actually, it could, no, because they have to create an answer first. Accept offer and create answer equals offer. These could be in two separate steps, accepting the offer and creating the answer, technically speaking, but it's better to do it as one. And then, so this is the person accepting the answer. So then we do rc dot first create answer so actually no i think we first have to set the remote description and then we create the answer so set remote description similar to, the, similar to accepting the answer is accepting the offer in the offer and after we do that then we can create an answer and send that back dot then we don't even need to know we don't even need to pass the variable in because we have the same actually no we do no we don't Okay, so once we set our remote description, once we're setting, then we create the answer. So RTC dot create answer, and it should automatically know it. And then after that, we just call a new callback that when our created we cre we cre created our answer. This dot on created answer. No, this create answer does actually return something because that's the answer that we need to send back to the other user who made the offer. So this dot on created answer, answer. And as far as I can think of at this second, that should be it. I might just double check it because I don't want to say the absolutely, don't want to say the wrong code. This is, we had to also, oh, on track. We could also do that later. Actually, we should add that on track soon. We'll get to that in a second. Um, and then the, actually, we should also do the on ice candidate, but that could be done in the client side. So maybe we could skip it for now. Just trying to remember the order that it was done. You make offer, and then this is from the this is from the side that accepts the offer. Oh, we have to make a new remote description apparently. Okay, it's a little bit different than I thought. I, I'm not sure if this is not, so. Some tutorials say that you have to make a new session description based on the text you get from the offer, but I'm not sure if that's necessary. All I know is that it works. Accept answer, and then make answer, and then just create answer. Oh, oh, okay. Then we set the we have to set the local description as the answer, and then we have to send the answer back. Okay. That's it. Good thing we checked, just to remember. So we almost we almost got everything. So when we accept offer and create answer, 
we first have to, according to some tutorials, create a new description based on the text, even though it might not be necessary, but some people say to do it. See, session description based on the text that we got from the author. And then we set the remote description as that. And when we create our answer, we have to set our local description to be the answer, and we send our answer back. So whatever we create, we set it as our local. So when we made our offer, we set that as our local description for the one making the offer. And when we make the answer, we set we, the local description for the second person as the answer. So RTC dot set local description as the answer. And then we send the answer back. And then the other person has to accept the answer, which we already did. And then they also have to handle these ICE candidates, which could be done on the other side. Okay, this should be good for now. So this just simplifies the process. Now, let's just set up our HTML. So, so we need a button to record our webcam or screen. So record, or, or capture more, capture webcam. And we also need a video object to just to, and which is muted because if you're using the same device, and autoplay. And this is for one for the local vid, are these quote, automatic quotes. And then another one for the remote vid. And, and we also need, since we're making our app to do everything by texting, we also need our boxes to contain, to, to make, we need these buttons to make the answer, make, make, make the offer, accept the answer, accept the offer and text area boxes. So button ID equals make offer, which this is usually done automatically based on another event, but we're just doing it for simplicity's sake here. Make offer. And then once you make our offer, it should display in a text area box below. Offer. Offer text, and then we can set this with JavaScript with Hashem's help. And then afterwards, we need a. So, this is on the side of the person making the offer. Then we, on the then since we're using the same web page, we need on the side of the person receiving the answer to re, to accept the 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 offer. So, make another button for that, another text area. Accept offer. Accept offer from other side. And then we just make a text area box for them to paste it into. So this text area box will have the text pasted into it automatically from JavaScript. But this one, with Hashem's help, will have will will re, be read when this button is pressed. So ID equals offer to read from. Simple enough. And what else do we need to do? We need to. Accept offer, what do we have? We, accept, we had accept offer and create answer as one step, right? Yeah. So now accept offer and then and automatically create answer. So this will have the offer to read from, but then we'll have another text area box that will contain the, uh, it could also be a div that will contain the answer that's generated. So paste offer text to read from but another one will have to have the answer pasted into it so answer text placeholders say wait for answer to be made okay we're running out of time so that's good almost done hopefully jumps help and that's for the offers. And so then once we have the answer, we have to now, then now back on the side of the person who's making the original offer, we need to have the text box and button to receive the answer. And then that's it. Besides for the other ICE candidates, which maybe we'll get to. So, so get answer, get answer. Receive answer or whatever. I don't even know how to spell receive. It happens to the best of us. And a text area box to paste the answer into equals paste answer. And then the placeholder just say paste answer text here. Okay. And we need one more thing to contain a div which will contain the ice candidates and a, and text areas that will be generated there. And another thing to, well, we actually need another button and text area to add the ice candidates which we'll get to. Okay, so 
Button ID equals add a new ICE candidate. So this will be whatever someone receives an ICE candidate, which means a lot of complicated things, but very simply just information about the person's computer, one's own computer, and one's own network, which is needed to be sent to the other person to make the real-time call. So basically everything one, everything one, one receives through this event of on ICE, on, on ICE candidate needs to be sent to the other person. So we'll just can do that manually with texting and paste, which could also be done through email, text, etc. So whenever someone receives, so we'll make the div here to have them received, and then once they're received on one end, they can be pasted into the other end. So text area ID equals new ice placeholder. We could say like paste new ice candidate from other side here. Okay, and now this div will just have we'll have to generate we'll have to generate new text areas as they're being created through the event. So we'll just give it an ID like equals ICs. Okay, and if the calculations are correct, this should be everything in HTML. Now let's just quickly make the JavaScript. So first, let's make for each user for the one making the offer and the one receiving the offer, we have to have the object for our wrapper object. So var wrap equals um, new wrapper. I don't even know what it's called. Wrap art, web RTC wrapper. Cool. It doesn't automatically it does not automatically suggest it, which is kind of annoying. Okay, now our start function, which is kind of unnecessary in this case, but we'll just keep it for now. And actually, oh, we we also need to add our add track method. So this dot on track, we're, we're on the right track. This is basically added whenever, so after everything is done, then the the tracks, which means the video and or audio um, information is sent to this object. And then this object can just make a callback here so that we can use it to display to our video. So RTC dot add event listener track. And then we'll just call our callback and you this is like a very simplified way of making callbacks there's many ways to do it okay that should be everything okay now now we need to do the functionality so when we capture the webcam let's see so cap dot on click let's use the the navigator dot get user media which is the webcam no no dot media devices because it could be more than one media device media devices and this is works in chrome i haven't tested it in other browsers so let's we'll get just get the video and the audio these are elaborated these these parameters are elaborated in other places but just very simply video and audio and then this returns a returns a stream which contains video and audio tracks which can be used to just to record or to put in a video and mainly to, oh, we also need to make an add track method to add to the to our our web our web RTC our pure connection. Yeah, we need to make an add. So we, basically, this is this ad needs this needs to receive the video and audio tracks that are gotten from our stream here, and then once it gets that, then behind the scenes the browser does a bunch of things to to get information about the track and make the call, etc. So this dot add a track, add, actually add stream. So add stream is is deprecated if you use it, if you use the rtc.add stream. But since we're making our own wrapper, we can add a stream by adding tracks. So stream. And then to do that, we have to go through all the tracks of the stream and add the tracks one by one. So stream dot get tracks dot for each track. And then for each track, we have to add it manually so rtc dot add track and it should say our our parameters here because i forgot the order okay we have to do a track plus so when we add the track we have to put the, the track that's being added plus the source of the track which is the stream according to these parameters which hopefully are correct and then that should do it okay so whenever we were to do our webcam which could also be re the recording the screen but either way so we do wrap which is our rtc wrapper dot add track 
no, add, add one more thing. Add stream, because that's our wrapper function. Let me add the whole stream. And we also set the up that we set that we set the stream of audio and video to our video object, which is muted because if you're using the same device, you'll notice that it makes a lot of annoying sound. So local vid. So we set the stream local vid dot source object equals dahar. And that should allow this to play. Since we have autoplay, it should start playing automatically. In fact, let's just test this to make sure everything is right. And then we'll get back to it. Index. Any day now. Okay. Let's just actually see if this works at all so far. No, it does not. Okay. So at least we tested it. So we should at least see what the, what the error is. Object must have a callable iterative property. Hmm. Failed to read the iServer's property from the situation. Okay, so apparently something in our parameter which was, which is wrong. So let's just see what was done before. RTC peer connection. Um, hmm. It looks like it's the same, as far as I can tell. But this is why we do trial and error. Studs. This looks like it's the same on the surface level. We have an object, and then that has another object, and then it has the URLs. Maybe that maybe it's an array actually. Oh, okay, it's an array. Never mind. Okay, so it's an array of objects. And each of the objects has URLs, but URLs actually doesn't have to be an array. So that is actually very confusing. Um, it used to not. It doesn't always used to be like that. Okay. I serve as an array, but that array is of objects, and the objects cont contain a property called URLs, and even though it's plural URLs, but they don't actually have to be an array. But I guess they could be, apparently they could be, but I'm just going to do it without an array, because, actually, I think they could be, because it, it says URLs. I think it's either way. But, okay, no errors, that's a good sign. And that's a good sign also. And this is also a better sign that I can actually see myself. So, nice. So that works. Now, I'm just going to... Okay, whatever. Now let's get back to our code here. So the, now this works so far. But now we actually have to implement the, rem, quote, the, the remote vid along with all these other buttons. So make offer should be very simple. Make offer. Make offer dot on click equals... We're actually... Yeah, we can do whatever. Um, so we need to call the make offer callback, or not callback, method of our wrapper function dot make offer. And that, okay, we didn't actually do promise. We, we actually should have done promises. That would have been easier. But okay, so we have to implement these callbacks here. So make offer. But then we have to do, we have to actually set up our callback. So wrap dot on offer. Is that what we called it? Nope. Yeah, on offer equals, and this is a. It says an e here, but this is actually our text of offer. It should be the text of the offer made, since it should be. Yeah, after. Okay, yes, it should. It says after the create offer. Okay. So we need to make the offer, but then we don't actually do anything here. We could have made a promise, but whatever. We made a callback instead. And then once that is done, then we need to set that. Well, in general, in a real app, this would send it with a WebSocket or something to the remote offer. But our real app just makes it, puts it in the text area, offer text. And then when you put the, when you set the value of text area, in this case, actually, I found out through some trial and error that it's best to set the inner HTML property. But then when you read it, you read the value property because of different line breaks, which are automatically deleted if you do the value property. Okay. So that should work. And then once we have the offer text, then the one on then now we need to implement the accept offer on the other side with the offer to read from. So that's for this is for the person this is for the person who's calling. And now let's implement for fun who's receiving. Who's getting because I don't know how to spell receiving. Okay. So this is for the one who's on so on what was our callback for receiving? It was on Accepted, no, it wasn't. Do we even have a callback? No, we don't have a. No, we don't have a callback for that. So, the other person needs to accept the offer by doing so. Accept offer dot on click equals new function. 
and then we read the value. They pasted. They basically should paste it into the text area box called offer to read from. So we read the value of that. So so the off equal equals. Okay, it doesn't have it automatically with the offer to read from. Offer to read from dot value. That should be the the, the text that's pasted into that. Then once we do that, then we have to call the um, the accept offer function, accept offer and create answer, right? Because they don't have to be done in both one. They don't have to be done at once, but for simplicity's sake, they could be. So we have to accept offer and create answer with our offer from the text area box, and we have to make implement the callback for when the answer is created. So dot on. I don't even remember. Okay, it's a good thing we have two files so we can look back and forth. Dot on created answer. No, what's on accepted answer? Oh no, that's the other part. Okay, on created answer. On created answer. This is not really E, but this is our created answer. And then this is pasted into the text area box, which can be pasted back to the other person. So. What do we even do? Answer text. Answer, we'll put it into the answer text. So answer text dot inner HTML equals created answer. And now the one who made the original call needs to receive that answer. So, so, so then we have the button for that. Accept answer. Get answer. Get answer dot on click okay not an array okay and then we need to so the person who's received the answer gets the text that was generated that was generated earlier that, that was generated in the answer text and then they paste it in the paste answer and then they accept the answer from that so let's get the value of that so var accepted answer text equals Pasted answer, I think pasted answer dot value. I think that was what it's called. Paste answer. Okay. I don't even remember what I said. Okay, running out of time. So seven minutes left. This is pretty intense. Um, hopefully we'll actually keep this video. Okay, actually, you know what? Let's just end the tutorial here. But the, actually, that should do it. No, um, okay, actually, no, we shouldn't do it because you need to do the, the ICE candidates. So let's quickly do the ICE candidates. So, okay, actually, no, no. We'll make a part two after this, maybe. If you're still interested, do part two. So, good. See you later.